to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. My name is Nick Rowe. We are continuing our coverage of HFES 2018. I'm here with Mr. Blake Arnsdorf and Claire Dickinson. Uh, and she is here. We're going to be talking about CIEHF, which we'll get into what that is in a minute. But you are the immediate past president of the Chartered Institute of Ergonomics and Human Factors. Well, hello, Nick. Hello, Blake. Yes, and I'm delighted to join you here this well, afternoon. Thanks for joining us. So to catch our listeners up, I just want to kind of go over your history. Who are you? And um, how did you get involved with human factors and ergonomics? Okay, so I'm currently a health and safety regulator for the railways in the UK. Uh, I got into ergonomics. I was doing research on lower back pain, developing screening tests. And I joined the health and safety executive and I was involved in implementing regulations in that area. And it felt from there. (laughs) It went from there. So... From there, you got involved with... um... Very early in my career, I got involved in standards development. Um, That was very beneficial. I got involved in writing publications on how to comply with the manual handling operations regulations. So we did lots of case study type publications and ideas books uh, advising industry how they would comply with these regulations. So it was ergonomics in the human factors area. So to do with manual handling, to do with display screen equipment, and also machinery safety design. So there are, in the UK, we have regulations that include human factors requirements in these areas. Gotcha. Wow. That's a large breadth of things to have to cover. Well, it is. And so, you know, we've having sort of implemented these regulations, then I got involved in investigating incidents, and I do sometimes the expert uh, witness role for the courts, and sometimes I'm supporting the investigation team, looking at the human factors, uh, causation involvement in the particular uh, chain of events that have led to the fatalities. So is that like forensics? Yes. Okay. So we talked to Keith Fawcett just recently and okay. about the yeah. El Faro. And um, so, yeah, that's a really interesting field. And, you know, one that maybe not a whole lot of people know that that exists even, that you can look into forensics as a human factors practitioner. And I think that's it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very interesting area because investigating any incident, it's very detailed and you're trying to build the storyline of what happened. And that storyline can start many years before because human factors is very much focused on the design. And if people haven't produced the equipment design, you know, there's the setting people up to fail, it can be years before that actually is realized and, and we end up with a multi-fatality incident. Right. So I want to kind of transition here into CIEHF. Yeah. Do you, do you say the whole thing or do you abbreviate? I tend to say the institute. The institute. All right. So to catch everybody up, what we're talking about here is the Chartered Institute of Ergonomics and Human Factors. And I certainly didn't know what this was before we started researching you for the show. Could you just let our listeners know what this is? Okay. So the, the institute is coming up to its 70th birthday. It's the oldest ergonomics institute in the world. And we have... A, 1,942 members in six grades, and it is how uh, people register, become certified ergonomists in the UK. Um, We have a very, very vibrant program of activities, so we're writing publications, white papers, Uh, we uh, have lots of events. One of the differences with HFES is that we don't have the barrier of geography. It's a smaller country. Right. So we have a numerous uh, one-day events on aviation or healthcare or particular topics. And uh, so our members all get together and obviously develop their knowledge and their education. And it's going well. 
Good. Did, did you happen to attend the Ergo X symposium on the exoskeletons? I didn't. So I was wondering if it was like that, where you kind of just get everybody in one room together to kind of talk about this one central topic. Um, Sometimes it is. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> it is. Yes, we have uh, you know our aviation conference and yeah, one day events, our nuclear conference or or the oil and gas conference is a very popular event. So yes, so the practitioners do come together for those one day events. And then do you ever have some of these like cross-pollinating events where you have uh, uh, practitioners from perhaps other industries interact and mingle with each other? Yeah, I mean, sometimes we meet up with uh, people like uh, the hygienists and the health and safety practitioners. It isn't a, um, we have uh, regional meetings and they tend to, those sort of risk uh, analysts, you know, they tend to appear at perhaps the regional events more than our central events. Our major <laughs> conference is held at the end of April each year and that is a three-day conference and that is a very much broader varied program okay that must be great to have like a much more centralized geographical location where you can get everybody involved in the organization a lot more often uh, but how did you get yourself involved as the president of the institute? So I was on the uh, professional affairs board for a number of years. This is a certification uh, system where people are applying for different grades of membership and are assessed. And um, so I was involved in doing assessments of consultancies that wanted to become accredited consultancies. Um, of individuals who are perhaps applying for fellowship, and so I did that for a number of years. And uh, then it was suggested that I attend council meetings. So and there <laughs> we go. It just sort of went from one thing to another. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing I want to touch on is um, this discussion panel about how CIEHF, the institute, can um, can interface with HFES, right? Unfortunately, Blake and I were unable to, to make this, so would you be able to kind of uh, summarize what happened at this panel? Okay, so the Institute is just starting to think about its next uh, strategic program. So we currently have a strategy called Towards 2020, and so you appreciate this next sort of 12 months, we're having to think about what we need to be including and which direction we want to go. What do we want to achieve? And of course, post-Brexit Britain, we want to make sure that we've got an international element in there. And so our executive, we're keen to visit other ergonomic societies around the world, have a look at what you're doing, what we could do collaboratively, because we, you know, for going forward, we're very much stronger if we do work together. And there are a lot of Brits that are working in uh, the the US, and you know they're keen to sort of engage. And we want into something meaningful, trying to get it define what that is, what we can be doing together. And so we were talking about maybe the European uh, chapter of HFES, uh, perhaps meeting up with CIEHF for a webinar on a particular topic. And patient safety is, is a key area for both countries. Um, on Thursday, we are publishing the health, Human Factors in Health and Social Care, a white paper, our vision of what, uh, how human factors will be integrated into the health sector. So, you know, that it, you know, is, would be prime to have a discussion around perhaps that white paper jointly with HFES, you know. So we were, we were kicking around a few ideas. Well, that sounds promising. I mean, I know there's a lot of um, HFES chapters abroad. There's like Australia we know of. There's, it sounds like there's one in the UK as well. So um, I guess what kind of specific initiatives other than like these, um, these collaboration pieces, I guess specifically what, what can happen to, to help facilitate collaboration across the two groups? Well, clearly at the sort of the leadership of, of both HFES and our council in, the, in England, um, we do need to sort of start having these conversations and, and get our ideas together. So, you know, nothing has been sort of formally agreed yet. Right, this of is the course. 12 month, right? This, this is, is 12 months. We've planted the seed. Let's see what, how that can grow in the next 12 months. And what, it's got to be something that is shaped and nurtured into something that is tangible and is really going to have impact. 
And I think doing something like like the webinar you were talking about, when important topics come up and being able to collaborate, and let, through the power of the internet, you're able to do these kinds of things with really not too much effort in, in the forefront. So that's a great option, I think. Well, absolutely. Webinars and Skyping, you know, and all these online sort of conferences. You know, the world is getting smaller in some respects. And, you know, it, we, we've got to get our heads around the technology and how we can deliver those sort of events. We're especially kind of fond of that because we have this, you know, no, no human factors practitioner left behind sort of mentality. And I think so, sort of these... Um, events that are available on the web could be a good way for people who are unable to attend ge uh, geographically um, to still get the information that's being presented at these at these events. Absolutely. So we have our, our monthly webinars, which are on Wednesdays at 5 p.m., and uh, we, the speaker could be anywhere in the world. We had someone fr from California uh, recently who, who delivered the session for us. So we're keen to build that and those sort of collaborative exercises. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I know you have a train to catch, so <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I want to, before we end this, uh, some people may be wondering uh, for some advice, right? So let's say they want to get involved with the organization. Um, what kind of advice do you have for someone who may be just starting their career or even, even um, mid-tier professionals that we heard about? I... Um Early on in my career, I was very fortunate to get involved in an international standards development uh, group. That network of people, 30 years later, I'm still in touch with. And of course, you know, I think people starting out their careers, it is about developing that network and, and working with other people. And I think there are so many benefits from doing that. And so I think I've been very blessed to have had that opportunity early on. I would advocate that for the, the new starters in the discipline. Excellent. So if people want to go find um, CIEHF, the Institute, I'm going to keep saying that. Uh, <laughs> where can they go? I know you gave me a website, but I want you to say it. Okay. So it's <laughs> www.ergonomics.org.uk. Excellent. And I'll be sure to post that in the show notes so everyone can find you. Claire Dickinson, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it. So the way we end the show, we like to say it depends because everything in human factors and ergonomics kind of depends on the human. So on the count of three, we'll say it depends. Ready? One, two, three. It, it depends. depends.